according to Wikipedia, FDM or finite difference methods are a class of numerical techniques used in approximating derivatives in differential equations using finite differences. Learn more about it here in Numerical Solutions to CE Problems. In order to understand how finite differences work, let's start with a set of input x, which would start with x0, then x1, x2, x3 until the last value of x, xn. If these values have equal interval, which would mean the difference between x1 and x0 is h, x2 with x3 is still h, x3 with x2 was h, and so on, we can correlate the terms by creating an equation like x1 is equal to x0 plus h. x2 is then x0 plus 2h or x2 is x1 plus h. So if we reach the last value of x, which is xn, we can have xn is equal to x0 plus n times h and xn is also equal to the value before it or that is x of n less 1 plus h. As we said that y is a function of x, we can also check the pattern of the output y. In this case, we come up with y0 is equal to f of x0, y1 is also equal to f of x1, y2 as f of x2, y3 as f of x3, and so on. In this discussion, the inputs x0 x1, x2, and x3 until xn are what we call arguments. The output y, which can be the function of x, are called entries. There are two ways of creating the difference table. Let's start with the forward difference. Forward difference is designated with delta f of x, where delta is used in physics as change or difference. And since it will be the difference of two values or inputs, the pattern can be taken as follows. Say we start with delta f of x0, which will be taken as f of x0 plus h less f of x0. This will be better understood as taking the next value of x0 less its present value. Taking delta f of x1 is then the value next to it, which is f of x1 plus h, less its value taken as f of x1. Delta f of x2 will be taken similarly, which will then be f of x2 plus h less f of x2. If we translate these functions into y, we get delta y0 is equal to y1 minus y0. Delta y1 is solved as y2 minus y1, and delta y2 is then y3 less y2. The first set of difference is then considered as first forward differences. So from the name, we can conclude that there would be second forward differences or third forward differences and so on. But how would these latter sets be solved? The second forward differences will be those from the previous solutions. Thus, the second forward difference of y0 is equal to delta y1 less delta y0. Delta squared y1 is delta y2 minus delta y1, and then delta squared y2 will be computed as delta y3 minus delta y2. If we place what we just discussed in a table, where the first two columns will be those of x and y, the first forward difference delta y will be computed by subtracting the two values of y, which would start as delta y0, which is equal to y1 minus y0. Delta y1 will be y2 minus y1, delta y2 is y3 minus y2, and delta y3 is y4 minus y3. Now, the second forward difference will be following the same procedure of taking the difference of the two previous terms. And then, 
If the data set still shows different values, we continue to the third forward difference following the same procedure of taking the difference of the two preceding values, like delta cube of y naught is delta squared y1 minus delta squared y naught, and so on. When do we end taking differences? We stop when we have similar values after taking differences because eventually subtracting them will give us zero. In forward difference, the first values in every degree of delta are known as leading forward differences. Moving on with the other way of creating difference tables and that is using backward difference. This is denoted by an inverse delta, which is called nebla. So backward difference is denoted as nebla f of x. If we derive the first backward differences, we take the opposite procedure from the first method. In this case, to take nebla y1, we use y1 minus y0. This would be like taking the difference of the present value with the previous value. So if we attempt to take nebla of y0, that would be y0 minus something we don't know. So unlike the previous method, which is started with y0, the backward difference starts with y1. Nebla y2 is then y2 minus y1, and nebla y3 is then computed as y3 less y2. For the second backward differences, the same procedure will be followed, but in this case, nebla squared of y1 is then nebla y1 minus nebla y0, and the pattern continues. When placed in a table, backward difference will be very similar with the forward difference, although we are going to use nebla instead of delta, and start with nebla y1 instead of y0. Similarly, as its name says, the last values of each difference set will be considered as leading backward differences. If we are asked to find a polynomial which best describes a given data set, how do we proceed? Say we have a set of data with input x and output y as follows, and we are required to find the polynomial to best describe the trend. We use finite differences to arrive at the polynomial. So we start by placing all values of x and y in two columns. In this example, let's use forward difference to arrive at the table. But again, you can also use backward difference and still arrive at the same table of values. Let's fill delta y. Start with 83 less 15, which is 68. Then 519 less 83 is 436. We continue with 1,659 minus 519, and that is 1,140. Then 3,839 less 1,659 as 2,180. And last, 7,395 minus 3,839 is equal to 3,556. Delta Y values seem to show no pattern or similarities yet, so we take delta squared Y. That would then be 436 minus 68, which is 368. 1140 minus 436 as 704. Then 2180 less 1140 equals 1,040. 3,556 less 2,180, and that is 1,376. Since the values still don't reflect any pattern, we proceed with delta cube y. So we get 704 minus 368, which is 336. 1,040 less 704, which is also 336. Then 1,376 less 1,040 as 336. If we continue with delta to the fourth, the values which would result would be zero. So we can take the last set of differences as delta cube y. From this table, we figured out 
the formula to be used, which would depend on the degree of delta. Thus, f of x will be a x cubed plus b x squared plus c x plus d. Once again, the degree of the polynomial will depend on the degree of delta or nebula if you use backward differences. And that would mean that if, for the first try, the values would already be similar, stop taking differences at delta y, and the polynomial will be expected to be ax plus b. The first term will have 1 for the exponent of x. For data sets closing at delta squared y, then f of x will be ax squared plus bx plus c. If it is delta cube y, then f of x is taken as ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, and so on. This will be how to identify the complexity of the polynomial. With the function of format already determined, we are only to figure out what the values of a, b, c, d, and so on are. Getting back to our example, we already found out that the polynomial format for the data set is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. In order to identify the values of the other variables other than x, we need to substitute the values of x in the equation. So for x equal to 1, y is then computed as a times 1 cubed plus b times 1 squared plus c times 1 plus d. For x equal to 2, the function will be 8a plus 4b plus 2c plus d. Now plug x as 3 and get 27a plus 9b plus 3c plus d. Do the same procedure with x is equal to 4, then x is equal to 5, and x is equal to 6. Then your y column is complete. From here on, take delta y. Although they are equations, it would be easy to subtract them. For delta y naught, we take 8a minus a as 7a, then 4b minus b as 3b, and 2c minus c as c. d minus d will be 0, so we have 7a plus 3b plus c. Taking the differences for the others will be the same. 27a minus 8a is 19a, 9b minus 4b is 5b, and 3c minus 2c is c. Do the same procedure until we complete delta y. Then proceed with delta squared y. 19a minus 7a is 12a, then 5b minus 3b is 2b. Then we have 12a plus 2b. Do the same process for the rest of delta squared y as well. Continue the difference table to the third degree, so we get 18a minus 12a as 6a, and 2b will cancel out. Next is 24a minus 18a, which is 6a, and again 2b will cancel out. Lastly, 30a minus 24a is 6a, and 2b becomes 0. Since we have the same values at this point, we can stop the difference. The next procedure is to place the values computed from the first table to the equations we arrive at from the second table. So we have the following. After the overlap, you can notice that we have equations to solve for the values of A, B, C, and D. In this case, to simplify equations, it is best to take those with small numerical coefficients. Check the equations provided at delta cube y. 6a is equal to 336. We can readily determine a as 56. Now move to delta squared y, which gives the equation 12a plus 12b is equal to 368. By plugging 56 as a, we can compute for b as negative 152. From delta y, we use the simplest equation which is 7a plus 3b plus c is equal to 68. 
and plug in the values of A and B, C will then be computed as 132. Take an equation from Y, and in this example, let's use A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 15. By substituting A, B, and C, the value of D is then solved as negative 21. Finally, we have the polynomial for the data set as 56x cubed minus 152x squared plus 132x less 21. Thank you.